Mind over matter. Put your mind somewhere else and keep going. That little voice in your head is trying to stop you from getting to where you want to be. Be successful and keep moving forward. With your host and world-renowned strength and conditioning coach, Phil Delroux. All right, we've been talking for a while now, but I have finally got my guy on the podcast. Obviously, you know this man right here, Mr. Mental Muscle, Nick Davenport. Now we have Favad. In Favad, we've had probably some of the most interesting talks and, and long-lasting talks yeah. about almost everything, right? We can t- Now, today we're going to talk about biohacking. Right, because I know that's something that you're really interested in. We've been doing uh, for quite a while, and it's something that you're well versed in. But how did you get started in this whole thing, and why did you want to do this? Because you're a businessman, right? Yeah. But you transition over into like helping and helping yourself and helping your kids just get to that optimal level of cognition. Can you explain a little bit more? Yeah. So first off, biohacking is changing your physiology, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, using patterns using different modalities to change your biology right Mm -hmm. i mean that's really what we're and physiology but how i got into it was so it was like january 2nd 2016. so my oldest son asher was just sitting on my lap we're celebrating the new year pumped up you know new year resolutions everybody's excited he's sitting on my lap i start massaging the shoulder Mm -hmm. somewhat like that yeah i feel on his back just kind of whatever, and I feel a little, something's off. Yeah. So I was like, hey, smash, move. He moves, the, there's this lump there. Mm-hmm. I said, take your shirt off. He takes his shirt off, man, there's a there's a lump on his back, like three, four inches big, right? Sticking out two or three inches from his back. Almost passed out. I mean, yeah, that shit was crazy. So we go into the doctor, and I do my little Google research like everybody does, WebMD, whatever. Mm-hmm. They said, okay, it's probably a lipoma, which is not life-threatening, nothing serious. It's a it's a fatty tissue tumor. Mm-hmm. You just extract it, a surgery, whatever surgeons do. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm like, all right, cool. It's a lipoma, no big deal. We go to the doctor on a Monday. That's a Sunday. We go in Monday. Mm-hmm. I swear to you guys, the first thing the doctor says when he feels like he gives me this concerned look and he goes, I didn't even ask him. He said, it's not a lipoma. And I was like, oh, shit, okay. right? So uh, we were in Arkansas at the time. Shout out to Arkansas. Um, New York, or not New York, um, Arkansas Children's Hospital was a six week wait to get in. So they told us we can get them in six weeks. So you guys got kids like you ain't waiting six weeks when your kids got some shit on their back. So luckily I got a friend of mine uh, in New York that was able to get us in with New York Presbyterian Hospital, which is like the top hospital in the country for uh, like soft tissue sarcoma, which is what we thought it was, which is the most uh, dangerous cancer you can get. Mm -hmm. It's so dangerous, they don't even release the mortality rate online. It's 100%. If you have a soft tissue sarcoma, you're gonna die from it within a year or two. It's more deadly than pancreatic cancer. Wow. So we go in and meet with uh, Dr. Alice Lee, and she looks at it. There's about 900 cases of people who get soft tissue sarcoma a year, kids. Mm -hmm. So we go from those odds, I don't know how many kids are in the world, but probably a a billion, I don't know, something like that. 7.1 billion people. people. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, there are a lot of kids, you know, a lot of kids. She said, she feels on it, does her thing. She says, it's a 50-50 chance, I don't know. So I went from odds of there ain't no way it's this to the top sarcoma specialist in the country going 50-50. So over that, Over the next 16 days, we spent in the pediatric oncology ward of New York Presbyterian Hospital. That is not a diagnostic hospital. Mm -hmm. That's a last hope, you know, like case studies, all that kind of thing, hospital. And during that 16 days, they extracted what we come to find out was a desmoid tumor, we'll get into in a second. But, um, you know, they they were kind of talking through uh, you know, this is what it could be. We don't know yet. We got to think about pathology. He was getting knocked out every day, six years old, seven years old. Um, and 
trying to figure out what this thing is. So for 16 days, my wife and I were there with him, trying to figure out, you know, we don't know what's going on. Yeah. Does he have the deadliest cancer known to man? Mm-hmm. Is it not a big deal? He's getting scanned every day, like I said, getting knocked out, mm-hmm. which is a whole nother story we'll get into in a second. Comes back, so we're sitting on the bed after he has his surgery. The doctor comes in, right? Mm-hmm. My wife and I sit on the bed with Smash, had a surgery. And you, you think about anxiety, man, that's like, just put yourself in that position. You think your kid might have cancer. That's crazy. And two of his roommates died, by the way, while we were there. Wow. Yeah. So like that that's was looking good. So, so, so yeah, you think about how rare all this shit is, mm-hmm. but then you're, you're living in it. Mm-hmm. Like everybody around you, their kids are dying or last hope, they got a month to live. When you check into this hospital, this ward of the hospital, they do triage on kids. When you walk in, there's 30 kids getting chemotherapy. So it don't it it doesn't feel so rare, right? Yeah. At that point. Mm-hmm. So anyway, they, they they take the tumor and they sequence it. While we're there, they put it in like 40 different mice. So whatever it is, they can learn how to treat it, right? New York Presbyterians, just they're at the top of the line again. Shout out. So she sits down. She goes, good news and bad news. Good news is it's not a sarcoma. So I'm like, "Ah." she says, but you're not out of the woods yet. It's a desmoid tumor. So desmoid tumors are not malignant. Mm -hmm. The only difference between them and cancer is they're not malignant. They're not going to grow anywhere else, Mm -hmm. but they can they can't come back, right? Okay. So she says, the reason we didn't think about it being a desmoid tumor, mm-hmm. there's only 40 cases ever documented in children. Ever. ever. Not a year, ever. History. History, Dang. right? So the pathology took a while because they were like, what the, can I say fuck? Yeah. What the, what the fuck is <laughs> we're this? We're drinking on this podcast. Okay, yeah, Cheers yeah. To so that. yeah, <laughs> we ran out of solo cups, <laughs> if I can say that. Very you know, true, but, yeah. uh, So, now we got this desmoid tumor and of course for you parents out there man we're googling our ass off like why she's talking i'm not even listening i'm the desmoid tumor is he good yeah. and uh she was like no he's good to go you know he's gonna have to do a lot of physical therapy all this kind of stuff to kind of get back but anyway they sequenced the tumor and so while they were sequencing the tumor you guys probably heard of the ibm watson computer you know, you guys know about it. Like, they, it beat the top, like, chess player in the world. Oh, okay. I heard of Machine that. learning, yeah. all that gotcha, shit. Gotcha. Well, New York Presbyterian had that IBM Watson there. <laughs> so you guys heard of genomics, right? Getting your genetic sequencing done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the IBM Watson understands your variants a little bit better than your typical 23andMe. Okay. And all that, you know, $99 shit. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah. So, again, no offense to 23andMe. You guys are good. <laughs> but, uh... During the time that they sequenced it, he came back with a really rare um, propensity for a disease called FH, familial hypercholesteremia, which basically means that like a 10 year old kid could have cholesterol like 450, Hmm. a young kid, right? They were like, hey, you need to get checked out, you know, check this thing out. Cause like my dad had his, had a heart attack at 21. Yeah. But he his heart attack, it wasn't drug induced or anything. His friends were holding him underwater. Mm-hmm. So I just always assumed like, okay, that's what caused it. But uh, he inherited that FH from me. So when we got the when we got the results back, again, my son's good, everything's good to go today. But they hit us back like three months later, he got this FH or he carries the gene. So I go and get all my blood tests done. And during getting my blood test, I don't know about you guys, but I get paranoid as fuck when I see a doctor. You know about that white the white coat, coat the white coat yeah. syndrome. I just see a doc. I, I don't know if I want to knock him out, hug him. Uh, I don't know what I want to do, but yeah, I'm not comfortable I'm with it. You calls know? from doctors. Come on, right? Yeah, like they leave you a voicemail. Hey, Nick, I need you to call me. They know that's messed up. You too. text them, right? <laughs> Nero's a fucking landline. I can't text the landline, bro. They call me from their cell phone. Yeah. So you know, I I uh, I get all this testing done myself and on my son and try and figure everything out. Well. Luckily, like my cholesterol wasn't that high. Um, my kid's cholesterol wasn't that high. My wife's wasn't. Mm-hmm. We did all the blood panels. Everything was pretty good. But it was a wake up call. You know, I was like 30 at the time. It was a wake up call, like how important your health is. Because when my son was sitting there in a the hospital bed for 16 days while two of his uh, roommates died, mm-hmm. you know, like you, you, you're not living. Yeah, you're real. existing. You know, you're just like. <sighs> 
what's going to go on? What's going to go on? What's going to go on? Because we all love our certainty, and that was uncertain as sure. it could be. So anyway, long story short, once we got the blood testing done, I was like, all right, I don't want to just survive. Not to be too cliche, man, we got to learn how to thrive as a family. Mm-hmm. So about that time, I, I stumbled upon biohacking gotcha. and how to really optimize peak performance, not just mentally, but physically. And not just physically like your output physically as an athlete, like physically like everything, right? Your mitochondrial density, you know, mm-hmm. your your inflammation, all those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now biohacking is a big deal. 2015, 2016, it was kind of in its infancy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Biohacking was like cryotherapy, mm-hmm. you know, so there's a lot more to it. So anyway, you know, I got shook you know, today's world, you know, we talk about being woke. I got shook. <laughs> I got scared as hell. You know, my son handled it like a champ. Yeah. My wife handled it like a champ. I was like a little bitch up in there, bro. Like, oh, like you know, that, yeah, yeah, man. You know, you know dads yeah. want to be strong, man. I wasn't strong at all, bro. Yeah. Well, so now, like, I mean, now he's thriving. You know, if you guys haven't seen it, we've done videos with Smash in the past. He's he's a uh, very promising boxer, young, young 12 years old now, right? Yeah. 12 years old. Uh, puts in the work day in and day out. He's still in, he's out there right now. He just got done training. So he definitely has bounced back in a lot of ways yeah. and he's gonna make it to the next level. We're very excited to see him grow. Um, but let's go over like, you know, exactly what is the definition of biohacking sure. for those that don't know. Sure, so first off, you know, biohacking is taking control of your biology. If you think about your genetics, your genetics load the gun, but your lifestyle pulls the trigger. Mm-hmm. A um, little morbid metaphor there, but you guys get the concept. You know, too many times we talk about, you know, our genetics, we're the predisposition. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we give away our power to our genetics. Only 2% of worldwide disease is specific to genetics. Mm-hmm. Only 2%. So not a large percentage. That other 98%, you might be the predisposition, yeah. but you can control it or mitigate a yeah. lot of the risk that you have. Mm-hmm. So what we got to do as individuals when it comes to biohacking, first off, I would I would recommend everybody get genetic testing done. And there's a thousand companies that can do that. Mm-hmm. What's the best one that you've come across? Um, I mean, really, at this point, because of their connections, like a 23andMe mm-hmm. or a DNA Fit. Okay. Uh, those those types of companies, they're, they're inexpensive. Everybody can afford those and they have really good results, right? Gotcha. So, I mean, any one of those guys those will work. A ton of those guys out there, right? I really like DNA Fit because of their reporting. Mm-hmm. But what once you get your genetics done, that tells you what you're at a predisposition for, mm-hmm. right? So don't be afraid of that. Understand your genetics, right? If you are at risk for cardiovascular disease or Alzheimer's because you have the APO4 gene, mm-hmm. which we can talk about a little bit more in depth later, okay or Parkinson's disease or whatever it is, at least you know. Yeah. And you know, what? what's the saying? A, a ounce of prevention is a pound of cure? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you, if you know what you're working with, mm-hmm. you're no longer ignorant. You're no longer in the disease span, which what you know, American healthcare is, is wait till you have a disease it's and reactive. then fix it. Yeah. It's reactive, yeah. right? We wanna be in the optimization span longevity how do we create vitality longevity optimization mm-hmm. as individuals get your genetic testing done yeah. understand the variance and what you might have to overcome that someone else doesn't because for me you know i thought i had a slow metabolism i thought i had all these things mm-hmm. being a little bit overweight <laughs> i do all these testings and it's like nah bro you're just a little lazy <laughs> you just need to move more exactly. eat less yeah, it makes you humble and for most of you guys out there move more eat less is going to get you where you want to go physically but yeah, for the most part. get that genetic testing done mm-hmm. but bi- biohacking is all about optimi- optimizing you right and I-, I look at it like this right if you had a car and it was the only car you'd have the whole time you lived. Mm-hmm. Would you take care of that car? Yep. Absolutely. You yeah, put absolutely. gas in it, you clean it up. You have no choice. You shot. Why don't people do that with their body? Yeah. Think about that. How yeah, crazy well, well, is people, that? People succumb to like their own wants as opposed to their needs. That's what it is. That's what it is. You know, so yeah. it's really about discipline at the end of the day. And you've been able to showcase your discipline based on the knowledge that you've attained through past experiences. Sure. Yeah, it started out with fear. Fear is a hell of a motivator, right? <laughs> ah, you know, I mean, you yeah. get scared, you get concerned about things and 
paranoid, whatever. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of anxiety can be healthy if you learn how to channel it, right? Of course, yes. Hone it in. Not like, you know, chronic anxiety. Like, um, we're, we all get anxious, but we're quick to, ang- you know, get to anxiety. And we'll talk about yeah. depression later on and how that oh, yeah. counteracts with, with, you know, biohacking. Mm-hmm. But as I started going into the process, you know, I, I met the, the kings of biohacking, your Dave Asprey's, your Ben Greenfield's. Mm-hmm. But the fathers of biohacking are actually bodybuilders because really? they were biohacking in the early 90s. Explain that. How? So they were learning how to hack their biology to become superhuman, superhuman. with their strength yep. and their physique, right? Yep. Now, the ways they used it were a lot of synthetic ways. Yeah. But they learned how to manipulate insulin. Mm-hmm. They learned how to manipulate blood sugar. They learned how to manipulate timing mm-hmm. with food, sequencing of food, which we don't typically talk about. As an yeah. example, if any of you guys who are fasting out there, you want to break a fast with all protein initially. Wait 30 minutes and then eat. Because that protein, that, that, that's it. Yeah, insulin. That's exactly right, right? You want to get, okay, I fasted. I rid myself of inflammation. Autophagy happens in the body. We start cleaning out things, mitochondrial density. But now we want to get into, you know, macros and all those things. Mm-hmm. But, but the bodybuilders actually kind of invented the biohacking. Mm-hmm. Contrary to, to, you know, belief now. Mm-hmm. But as we look at biohacking, as we know now, people are trying to commercialize it. It's but a you, buzzword now. Yeah, it's a buzzword. <laughs> biohacking. What does it mean? Biohack it, your body and take it, steps. That's it. Yeah. Take control of your biology. Mm-hmm. Don't mean being perfect. It doesn't mean, you know, you're not going to eat cheesecake and have a drink. <laughs> you know, all those a lot of carbs. Things. That, yeah, man. Control your love breathing. It. I love biohacking. Who don't love carbs? Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, that's true. You got I mean, a friend who doesn't eat carbs? He's an asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> He's an asshole. Brain I mean, come sugar. on, man. Very true. Yeah, man. What does your brain run off of? Oh, Glucose. Yeah, and listen, man. Let, in biohacking, understand your genetics. I started adopting a ketogenic diet. The problem is, I have the APO4 gene, which I found out through my genetics. Mm-hmm. APO4 gene doesn't allow you to process saturated fat mm-hmm. optimally. So what happens with that saturated fat? It oxidizes in your blood vessels. Mm-hmm. I lose a lot of weight on keto. I can lose eight, 10 pounds a week. What's okay. it doing to my vascular integrity, my mm-hmm. vascular health, my brain health, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, because you hear a lot of people, you got APO4, you got to eat more fats, ease up on the carbs and sugars to get rid of amyloid plaques and all Mm -hmm. those things that cause dementia, Parkinson's, Mm -hmm. all that. But what if you have APO4 and FH, which one out of 120 people in the world are inflicted with, right? I can go, man, I'm just fucked. Mm -hmm. Or you can say, no, man, you're in control of your biology. So biohacking is all about taking accountability for what's going on in your body, in your mind, and your spirit, all those things, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what it means to me. So, you know, everybody's kind of heard of cryotherapy. Well, cryotherapy is just hormetic stress. Yeah. It tricks your body into thinking you're gonna die. Like right. you're too cold, shit's going down, you're gonna die. But, you know, any hormetic stress you guys can can expose yourself to, hormetic stress is good stress, right? Yeah. Is, is positive. Yeah, training. Training, period, right? So, you know, you've got cryotherapy. You have like BFR, blood flow restriction how do, training. How do you? How do you? How do you think? And there's a lot of conflicting views on this. Cold plunge, cryo. Which is better? Why? You know, what's the difference? Sure. So, and so, forth. so cryotherapy is more therapeutic, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it gets about a fourth of an inch deep. It does brown fat, not to the level of cold plunging, but it does brown fat. Brown fat is, you know, if you can take your fat cells and brown those, you can literally pee those out. So you can pee out fat, which is, I don't know about you guys, I'm a little <laughs> overweight, so that's a little enticing, <laughs> right? So, when you, you know, brown fat. yeah, you browning fat is amazing to do. Yeah. So cryotherapy is gonna be a little bit more therapeutic, it's gonna rid you inflammation. For you athletes out there though, you guys who are working, you know, super hard every day, mm-hmm it doesn't get deep enough. Doesn't mean don't do it, mm. right? But cold plunge, you know, ice bath and, and, and that kind of thing, it gets much deeper, gets into the tissue. Mm. So it can rid inflammation, you know, in the tissue. Because of that though, again, biohacking is all about optimization. You don't wanna do cold plunge therapy right after you work out because a big part of the benefits of working out is inflammation. 
So if you are so optimized that you can't get to that inflammatory response yeah. that you want from working out, mm -hmm. that lactic acid buildup and all those things that happen once you work out, the physiology of working out, you don't want to go straight into cryo or definitely not cold plunge. You want to space that out three or four hours. Yeah, we've been working now for a few days and we get to your house and you, know, you already go through your basic circuit in a sense, mm -hmm. right? Your biohacking circuit. And you explain them, explain to them like what exactly that is step by step. Yeah, so for me, you know, I, I'm a CEO of software company. So I love analytics, I love data, I love feedback because I'm not self-aware enough to not have clear feedback. My wife will tell you that. Like I'm not good at, I'm doing good. Well, you stereotype. Nah, you ain't doing time. good. Yeah, man. Come on, man. You husbands out there, we need to get more self-aware, gentlemen. That ain't got nothing to do with biohacking, by the way. That's just being, stop being a selfish asshole. But for me, I love to start my morning getting better at making decisions. So biohacking for me is, you know, I want to optimize myself mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Mm -hmm. So I do crowd therapy. Mm -hmm. I do 30 minutes in the sauna above 163 degrees because 163 and above, you get that metabolic response. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of misnomers out there that you're gonna burn five to 800 calories doing crowd therapy. Uh, man, I wish that were true. <laughs> I weigh 15 to 18 pounds less if that were true. Yeah. I do it for the inflammatory response and uh, you know the, the response of my brain. So I do cryotherapy where my brain is exposed. A lot of people do it, you know, neck down. Mm. I do it all the way in, fully enclosed, because I want that synaptic response, mm. right, in the brain. Okay. So I go from cryotherapy into sauna again, one sixty three and above for thirty minutes, and then I jump right into the cold plunge at thirty nine degrees for six minutes, mm. and that gets me prepped for the day mentally. Secondly, your body's going, man, what the fuck have you done, right? Your body's yeah. like trying to get used to crowd. By the time it gets used to being cold, you get super hot. Yeah. Then your, you know, your heart, your heart rate raises, and then you jump into the plunge, your heart rate jumps down. So for anybody who has a heart valve issue, do not go hot to cold. Mm. That will kill you. <laughs> like literally your your blood vessels will spasm yeah. and that's the end of that. So yeah. If there's a disclaimer before a podcast, to, you know, I am not a doctor. Yeah, yeah. Shit, I don't even really right know now. if I know what I'm talking about. But this <laughs> working for me. You get a drink. You know, yeah. talk, you get a drink. Yeah. Right? You know, we're just talking. But so maybe don't do anything I'm saying because I'm not even a beacon Look of hell. To it. Yeah. Well, it, it, no, I, I put you on for the simple fact that the conversations we've had and what I've seen you been been able to do just for yourself, for your son. Also, he works with Tyler Ray. Shout out to Tyler Ray. He's been on the podcast, Wolverine. Wolverine, baby. Right. Everybody thinks he's Dustin Poirier at some point. He's not. He's it's racist. racist. He's um, coming, though. It's, 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 it is a little slight <laughs> racist, isn't it? I, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. Either. Maybe because we work with them both. So. Yeah, that makes sense. So, But but honestly, um, the abilities of these, like, with your son, even, even with Tyler, you know, we've seen tremendous increases in his recoverability. Sure. You know, um, I think more so cognition plays a big role. This is why I wanted yeah. to bring you two together. Um, it's, it's very important. Like for me, it's the most important thing that I can do because if I'm mentally there and I'm not fogged out, I can do these podcasts, That's I can train it. people, I can you know, do what I need to do on on all spectrums of my business. Yeah, um, It allows me to be just that more optimal. So Nick, what do you see when, when, you, when you hear this? Like, what do you think about it? Well, it's just like you said, biohacking is anything that is internal to your own physical form. So mm -hmm. mental obviously falls into that. So I said something a little bit earlier. We were talking just breathing like that's technically biohacking. You know how to slow down the, the parasympathetic or invoke the parasympathetic response by slowing down breathing. Yeah. That's technically biohacking. That's mm -hmm. something that don't require any fancy technology. Now, granted, that stuff is important because we both have invested sure. lots of money sure. into tools that can help like neurofeedback and all the other cognitive training devices. So yeah, bringing that in, you can measure it so you know not only am I feeling sharper, I can see it. Oh, my scores are at this point or my QEG reading shows this is the optimal brain state because those electric signals are firing the way they should. So yeah. I, I love the analytics too. So I'm all with that. Yeah. And, and one thing for those of you listening, man, your biology is not your destiny. Oh, yes. You know, look, we'll talk another time about empowerment. Mm -hmm. 
that's not for today because I get a little long winded. But here's what I will say. You know, you are in control of your, your biological destiny. And your biology is not getting hit by a fucking car or, you know, a wreck or some shit or getting shot by somebody. Mm. Which we can talk politics some other time, too, if you guys want. <laughs> we'll do like a four phase five. <laughs> we'll do this in series, y'all. Yeah, man, series. Series, series one. True. But that's the crazy thing. We live in a time and age where in Thank ancient you. times, the Boom. main reason of dying was two things getting killed by animal tribe that was warring with or disease. Nowadays, we really don't have at least nah. the, the dangerous diseases are minimized. Sure. And then getting killed can happen, but it's very sure. rare. So it's like, why aren't we living longer? Yeah. So like you said, it's not a death sentence. My students I used to teach, no, right? Bro. They'll give me excuses. Oh, being obese runs in my family. And there was like a meme nah. that said, apparently no one runs in your family. And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like I like that meme because it's like, it's if, if anyone yeah, ran, come on, man. But it was, and they would argue with me and I'm the teacher, I'm the professor. And they're like, but my mom is, it's like, no, the behaviors your mom showed yeah. you, because yeah. you weren't born this way. Like most kids up until five are, you don't really see obese. Sometimes you do, but most kids five yeah. is like the, the mid ground. And then after that, then you see seven, eight, ten. Well, they get bigger. Let, let, That's let me, what you see. Let me ask everybody a question. Obviously, YouTube being everybody, you guys can't talk. But. <laughs> we don't have a call in, bro. But yeah, we should. Maybe we should. next time. Face so, being in shape, being physically fit, is that complex? Um, no. I mean, it just move. Like a lot of times, it's just move. <laughs> okay, so move more. Yeah. Eat. Less, yeah, is that really complicated? No, not at all. In it can be up. complex to a person that really doesn't understand how to program and schedule things out. But at the end of the day, just go for a walk. All right, so, Super so, so, yeah. what, what you just asked about it's, programming it's obviously, when I want to get to a certain level, I gotta have professionals. If I want to get to a certain level cognitively, Absolutely. I gotta work with Nick. Yeah. If I want to get to a certain level you know, uh, physically and kick someone's ass. <laughs> like mm -hmm. a lot of the guy, you know, fucking brought those awards out. Let them know about it. <laughs> <Where they at? laughs> the award winning <laughs> fucking top MMA combat trainer in the world. You know, you other, um, Combatants, whatever. Fuck you guys. Damn, the best. Coming straight. You know, I'm telling him, bro. I ain't telling him my address. I'm just saying, fuck with Phil. He ain't, you can't fuck with Phil. You fuck with me. You can't fuck with well, Phil. But to be fair though, his his experience is pretty good because you've been bodybuilder fit, physique fit, competitor fit, MMA fit, football fit. That's why he's the best though, <laughs> yeah. because he's lived the life. A, a lot of you trainers are full of shit. Mm -hmm. You ain't lived the life. You understand greatness, but you ain't lived ain't greatness. Phil has lived greatness. Yeah. Nick, you live greatness. Yeah. And when you live it, you can speak on it, yeah. right? You can transcend your greatness and and transfer that to other people. Yeah. Like, I see what it is. We was doing this in high school. You like, can I can attest to it. We was in the weight room with me, him, yeah. football, like JK, Dave Lewis, all them shots out of them. They went to yeah. high levels too in football. And it's like, we would be in the corner amongst like 50 other kids. Us four, we would be going in. You yeah. would be leading us. So this ain't nothing. That's, that was 20, 2006, 2007. Yeah, you guys lived it up. 15 See, years. for mere mortals like me, <laughs> we're just kind of like, you know, how do we fucking cheat the system? But that's what the biohacking is, though. Like, yeah, yeah. for those of you who are like, oh, willpower is the key, and I got to get up at 5 a.m., and I got to do this and that. Man, you ain't doing that shit your whole they life. Know. Well, well, you, ain't you, you have a conscious way of, of setting up your day to where it's the most optimal it can be so that you can be who you need to be. Sure. Right? I've Trying seen, anyway. Well, you no, know? nah, you're doing it, man, because when it comes down to success, a lot of you guys don't know, he's right, he's under the radar, but I've seen this man, and he does. he's very successful. Um, and he's one of those guys that stays under the radar. But... The reason why I wanted to bring you on is because the interesting things that you have, I've seen you take, man, how many pills do you take a day? Like 35? 35 pills a day. At, Most people can't take at, a protein once, shake. At once. <laughs> yeah. At once. At once. Oh. Phil saw it. Phil saw it the other this day morning. and was like, it was this oh, morning. shit. It was this morning. Yeah. Um, but then again, <laughs> you want some more? Yeah, Go ahead. Grab, grab, grab Listen. Pour them out. Uh, we we listen, 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 though. <laughs> Seriously, though. Alcohol does have fermentation. Fermentation is important for gut health. So I'm kind of biohacking right now for you guys out there. We'll so just call it what it is. Yeah, man. <laughs> We're catching the buzz. Working but out. I am biohacking. I'm biohacking my uh, ability to talk shit. That's it. And it, and it comes out very well, too. I've been to dinners with this guy. <laughs> By the way, anybody that like yeah. my wife thinks is cool, it, it, she don't like anybody. So if she likes him, I know that he's on point. 
But I wanted to, so you were from, you're in Ar Ar Arkansas. Why'd you come to Florida? Like, well, what happened there? well, that's a loaded question, everybody on this call. I came to Florida because my brother-in-law, Donnie Youngblood, stand up. <laughs> he, he, kept, he kept telling me about this guy, this bearded Viking looking motherfucker online <laughs> that was doing all this crazy shit. I started training my son. When my son, when my son came back from, uh, came back from New York Presbyterian and he was good to go, we were watching Manny Pacquiao fight one day yeah. and he's watching it. And I grew up a fight fan, big time. Roy Jones and, and you know, some other guys back in the 90s. Really Roy. But he said, Dad, I want to be a world champion. And I said, at what? <laughs> and he goes, boxing. And I said, why? And he goes, because I, I, I want to show people that you can create your own life. You can create your own success. Mm -hmm. And he was like seven. I was like, wow, shit, man, I suck. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> I never said, I never uttered some shit like that in my life. I was like, man, that's badass. So I said, all right, man, go get a piece of paper. He goes, get a piece of paper. I said, write that shit down. I said, sign it and date it. Contract to yourself. Mm -hmm. So I start training him on that shit, right? And from that, you know, we we started going at the boxing. So as we're boxing, we're training. I'm trying to make up shit, figure things out. My brother-in-law, Donnie, tells me about this guy, this Viking fuck. And I go online, I start checking this shit out. He's doing, you know, posterior chain and torque and all the shit you guys know about. Phil's doing, you know, <laughs> talking about coiling and power and all that badass shit he does. I started taking Phil's ideas and going, let's couple that shit. Mm -hmm. So that tincher shit you do, like boom or yeah. pincher or whatever. What's that? How do you say it? What the foot? Pincher? Yeah. Is it pincher or tincher? It's pincher. Tincher is some weed shit, yeah, right? Yeah. What you that's about how you talk about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Tincher, pincher. I don't yeah, give a fuck. That's, that's we do different. tincher, pincher. That's a little different. That's all the same shit. Yeah. So you know how you would take like a plate flip and have a guy flip the shit and grab it. Yeah. But you also like to take a band put around someone's ahead yeah. and pull back yeah cause but you ain't never done that shit together i mean i've had though but, but you haven't put on a video yeah i did right? <laughs> so i did the shit yeah. i had my little fucking seven-year-old son i had a fucking rogue band on his head yeah, yeah. and i said grab them fucking 10 pounds and Start i pressing. said tincture apparently it's not tincture okay <laughs> for you weed heads out there there's a difference between tincture and pincher definitely so it so sounds like some fucking uh reindeer up in he's there he's like rock prancer <laughs> and that's yeah. and pincher and pincher. them all up in there bro come on so anyway um you know, I, I like, I don't, most of you guys do. I know you do. I know you do. Yeah. And most of you guys that follow these guys, obviously great minds think alike. We like to do things all out. So I catch a couple of this guy's videos. I start working with my son. Mm -hmm. He's getting his ass kicked and sparring. We start doing some of the things that you were showing on your videos. Mm -hmm. Next thing I know, he's breaking these dudes off. Yeah. And you know, as a dad, I'm like, yeah, man, fuck that. Fuck them. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah, he has got it. Yeah. So I called down here. I get Marine Shea on the line. <laughs> Marine says, bring your son down. It's November of 2020. Everybody's in the middle of COVID and we're trying to think about how to kick people's ass. <laughs> yeah. Trying to find some of them pangolin eating Chinese motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Don't stop. You can edit that. I don't know if that's appropriate or not. <laughs> I don't even know if we could even say that. We might just get I don't even know. this motherfucker. I don't right? know, man. Whatever. We keep rolling. <laughs> the FBI call. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know, man. Someone ate a pangolin at some point. <laughs> and I got sick. Part, wasn't it? <laughs> I got sick three fucking times. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah man. I mean, if you're a bad eating habit, cost someone 4,000 miles away to get sick yeah. that's fucked up yeah I know I'm just saying <laughs> alright it's, it's over the whole world yeah I don't even know what happened world. you know what I'm saying but I got yeah. ready I got ready so we came down here to South Florida to Boca and met with Phil in person because why wouldn't you if you can yep. you know so we met Phil he started working with my son and everybody's getting it now he's fucking up everybody now working yeah. with Phil so yeah, that's, that's cool. how we got down here is just my brother-in-law who I usually don't trust his decision making but he was right in this sense and uh, <laughs> you know that's how we got here and we met connected yeah. and here we are yeah no it's, it's great man just to be a part not only with with Smash with Smash with you with the entire family um, the way you you know the way you parent uh, you know you're a great husband 
What do you think? He's like, eh, I'll tell you that because you, you appreciate that. You, you know what I'm saying? I'll give you your props. Yeah. Thankfully, uh, we don't have Collins because my wife is dying and be like, <laughs> that's a that lie. motherfucker no, that's right not there. True. He ain't that's shit. That's not true. That's not true. That's <laughs> I've only been married once, by the way. That's not, that's, you know what I'm saying? And I got married at 21. And, that's, and, that's, and I'm still married. Sounds like you're you doing a good saying? job. That's okay. Good job, Most right? people are divorced. Hey, I bought half married. Come on, baby. I didn't take some notes. And I don't even have a prenup. And we're still married. Yo, what do you think? But what do you think is like, one of the major things that young men out there need to really focus on if they want to have a great family with with more of a solid foundation where there is no issues man you know what's gonna have some issues but you know yeah but here here's the thing how many of you guys have thought about what kind of relationship do you have with yourself mm -hmm. right yeah i'm not talking about self-respect and all that shit that cliche shit people say mm -hmm. when you think about the voices in your head He's not a schizophrenic, by the way. We've done neurofeedback on Phil. <laughs> the voice in your head, we'll keep that singular, not plural. If I talk with you like the voice in your head talks to you, will we have a good relationship? Nope. Hmm. Is that Do fair to yourself. ask people, right? Mm -hmm. How do you talk with yourself? Mm -hmm. What kind of relationship do you have with yourself? So like I told my son and my other kids, I got four of them, by the way. Biohack them, too. Um <laughs> What kind of relationship do you have with your 10 year older self? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. If you can think ahead 10 years from now, who am I? Am I taking care of that person, yeah. that, that woman, that man? Are they where I want them to be and I'm willing to do what it takes to support them? Yeah. Because if you don't have a great relationship with yourself, you can't have a great relationship with anyone. It erodes every relationship. Mm -hmm. So for me, not to get too psychological, what what kind of relationship do you have with yourself? See, a lot of people out there, I've been around them, you guys have been around them, we were just talking about this earlier, pre-podcast, video podcast, whatever this shit is. <laughs> you know, I don't, even know, I don't even know, man, what we call it. I don't, even, I don't understand it. It's like- Before, I, before recording. Yeah, well listen, man, I heard somebody the other day tell me I read a book. I said, you read or do you listen to it? Uh, now, how the fuck do you listen to a book? Mm. Think about that. You did a, a Audible. Audible. I listen. I have Audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't you don't watch a podcast. Uh huh. I mean, you can, but you're listening, right? So yeah, anyway, yeah. I don't know why I said. You listen that. to anyway. the information. Yeah. But you're, yeah. you're also watching. But yeah, you watch it. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Shout out to those who's watching. Yeah, watchers, what, boyer motherfucker. Uh, subscribe <laughs> to the YouTube channel, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah. watch his other stuff. stuff. Watch his workouts. Yeah. Listen to his words. Yeah. What were we talking about though before I got on that tangent? The words to the people. Have yeah, so so the relationship you have with yourself, man, how are you gonna respect your wife or your husband, or your boyfriend, girlfriend, brother, sister, mother, father, if you got a bad relationship with yourself? Mm -hmm. And here's something interesting. Last week, a study done out of Switzerland, mm -hmm. depression isn't a chemical imbalance oh, in yeah. the brain. Now I you have known that on that for yes. a long well I do have a lot to say. No, so let me let no 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 you ain't cut me off. Give me some feedback on when you read that what you thought about so, it. So my background was original clinical psychology diagnoses and that's the biggest cop out is I have a chemical imbalance and my serotonin receptors are not receiving or not firing and I before I even knew about the research it was just a cop out to me because at the end of the day depression is a byproduct of a lot of times circumstance. The goal is, because there's actually evolutionary traits that we evolved that get depressed. It's actually real in that sense, because when you got depressed in ancient times, what would happen? You would isolate yourself from the tribe, go into your little corner, reconfigure, come back and take over and do what you got to do. I still do that, by the way. But, I ain't got to fucking try. But we're different, though. <laughs> we're different because no one's... But, <laughs> But we, we're a little bit different, though, because nowadays, outside of our circle, people get into that little hole. Yeah. And they stay there. Stay there, bro, for no, decades. It's okay to be depressed because if Everybody, your brain's out yeah. of whack, then you need to take this medicine or we need to console you versus like if you did depression back then, it would happen. It's not like it's new. It's just that if you stayed in that hole, yeah. something else would come kill you, eat you, yeah. That's uh, it. rape you, whatever. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah, I shouldn't have said our word on YouTube, but, but basically it would evolve to get depressed Absolutely. to reconfigure because <laughs> what happens in therapy, like if I get into that side, they tell you to think about your thoughts, re like you said, that internal voice, reconfigure, mm -hmm. sometimes they say journal, and that's important only because your brain can now tangibilize Assess those thoughts. itself. But Assess we're not itself. doing that. We're, no. the, we're, we're about medicating, baby. Exactly. What that's culture what says, I, 
I'm so bipolar. I'm so ADHD. That's not a reward. That's not a badge of honor. It's a it's a, a symptom to a bigger problem. That you're so human. <laughs> there is no template for being a human being. Mm-hmm. And when we don't act like someone else, when we don't achieve like someone else, we start to internalize that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. See, I I don't believe anyone is special. Mm-hmm. I believe we're all capable of the same greatness. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody special. So what stops people from being great? What stops you from being great is that limiting belief you put on yourself. Exactly. See, there's a saying in the world that says you get what you deserve. We all deserve the same thing. The best of the best of the best. And, you know, people talk about Dahmer or fucking Manson, whatever. We talk about Dahmer and Manson? We can in a minute. Oh, right. You know, dark sticks no, and right. cannibalism and shit. You know about that? Is that the one where it was a, was a clown? Or was that Bundy? No, that, was Gacy. that was Bundy and Gacy. Gacy and was there were so many Bundy. That's a just dark triad. Zach Afro and look a motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> <Jeff> you know. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. I remember you play, that. Movie, you play I, 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 shit. I saw that. It's, good. it's actually pretty good. Oh, yeah. Really? Pretty they kind of look alike. Zach Efron's so a fucking weird. serial killer. He's, de- <laughs> he's definitely a serial killer. Yeah, sure. man. That See the last movie? I saw his abs, that motherfucker. It's he's probably right. hacking his abs. Nah, they're going back. He got a chef and shit. Oh, he's fast. He's going now, right? Okay, Zach. I think he's in his 30s, late 30s. Yeah, Zach. Wrinkle motherfucker. What are you talking about? Listen, man. At the end of the day, ain't nobody special. Yeah, it's what you earn that you get in life, mm-hmm. and, and and the things that we gotta set ourselves up for is don't be afraid of accountability. Yeah. We're all capable of the same things. The things that your brain is made of. By the way, your brain is the most complex thing in the universe. universe. Yep. But your brain is made of the same things as stardust, mm-hmm. and you guys are worried about paying your bills, inflation. Gas prices, who the president is, what China's going to do tomorrow. Of low, kind of low to nonsense. Man, you know what you're capable of? Everybody listening, hearing this shit. You're capable of anything you want to be capable of. And for me, biohacking is the ability to transcend your current circumstance. Like you talked about circumstances with depression. You're bigger than that. Mm-hmm. And biohacking allows you to step into that yeah. mm-hmm. and build it. Not just believe it. You know, a lot of like self-help people yeah, out there they, like, you know, the gimmick shit, stuff. believe it and then achieve it and whatever. Yeah. You ain't going to believe anything and achieve it just out of belief. I don't know what fuck belief I even means. I cringe when I see that stuff. Like, like you believe that seat is going to hold you up. But if that motherfucker doesn't, does it mean Gravity you got a fucked up belief? No, man. <laughs> Gravity's a thing. Gravity going to happen no matter it's what. It's going to so. happen, bro. Oh, Things are going to happen. And I told you, know? you that before. Too. Yeah, oh, like, go there. Yeah. Well, well, but, but that's no. a perfect. Po- that's a perfect point. You already said. You yeah. said, or you just fat. And he looked at me. as like, like I told you before. So back in when you worked with me the first time, I think it was March or April. So between then and August, I gained like twenty five pounds. So he let me know. And instead of being like, oh, Tackle cues again. My, my my feelings, because a lot of times when people you say accountability, <laughs> they say accountability, right? And people are like, oh, my feelings. I could have did that, but I'm like, you know what? I didn't like hearing that, but it's like, it's a reason he said that. You're a real one, though. See? And I, what I do, I lost 25 yeah. pounds. Yeah. yeah. But most people wouldn't have done that because, like you said, people get coddled. They think they deserve something. Like, everyone has the right to get in shape. Yeah. No one's stopping but you. But, Nick, what made you lose the 25 pounds? Are you special? Are you metabolically efficient? I don't efficient? think that I'm any much better. I just know I wanted it. That's what it that's, is, bro. That's what happened. But it comes see, down to decisions. See, so. wanting sure. isn't enough. Yeah. That's what biohacking taught me mm. because I would be biohacking and be like, you know what? I fasted all day. You know, I warrior fast. I eat two hours a day. I eat between 5 and 7 p.m. I do cryo. I do cold plunge. I do um, sauna with chromotherapy. I do red light therapy. I do the muse. I do neurofeedback four days a week. I got shit on my ankle that taps into my vagus nerve or vagus nerve, vagus you know, nerve. whatever the fuck you say. Yeah. You vagal, know. What happens in vagal, 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 vaginal nerve? I don't even so, know. Wow. You know, hey, hey, you said rape, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, hey, you said it again. We I was demonetized. I was quoted, bro. This okay? is demonetized. Quoted. Yeah, bro. Come That's on. That's a good one. You know, capitalism is that an evil word? Vegas. We'll get to some yeah, people. Vegas. Some people. So, so I use other haptic devices. I have a little touch of tinnitus because I have TMJ. So I use this device on my uh, wrist to work with that. I use a hat beat mm-hmm. that mimics the biological signature of alcohol, nicotine, and some other shit I've never heard of that got too many syllables. <laughs> but I use a lot of various things to keep me in an optimal state mm-hmm. because. 
I'll fuck up with my decisions sometimes. You know what I mean? I love pizza. So do I. Bro. You, I mean, I pizza, pizza, bro. bro. You can't have pizza. Twenty ten, a whole my box. First, you know what I'm my first word was French fry. Really? Come on, man. Badass. I was born to be a shit. Fat boy. My son Casra, bro. That motherfucker eat at least half a pound of French fries yeah. every two days. All day. Chicken and fries. That's Mom, cool. let me get some chicken and fries. Yeah, bro. That's my son too. <laughs> yeah, Leo, <laughs> man. Hey, you guys don't know Leo, man. I'm gonna try to put his business out there. Leo's a beast. <laughs> Leo, man. <laughs> That dude's funny, man. That's my son, guys. He's smart, too. He didn't know. Leo's funny, witty, good-looking little dude. Mm-hmm. Already macking all that. He been talking to my daughter. I said, Leo, listen, I love your dad, but motherfucker, you need to slow your roll. I don't even think you know, he knows what he's doing. He didn't know. He's just flowing, bro. He's just flowing. He's, 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 he's giving that look. When he's got a beard, it's over with. Oh, man. That motherfucker, bro. 10 years. Like, he, he wants to be clean cut. That's oh, really? Right, right, right now, he's yeah. six. What? No, he's what seven. Seven. He's seven, about to be right. eight. It's about that time when he started growing. Leo going to corporate Shit. route. Listen, <laughs> I had ten. I had my no. I don't know if I bow actually. I grew up, I was adopted. My last name is Welch, and for those of you that can see that are not just listening to podcasts or watching, I don't look like a Welch, you know. <laughs> I don't. I mean, let's just be real. Yo. Welch? Nah. Nah, nah he's lying. Yep. He's lying. <laughs> he's trying to run from a creditor. You know what I mean? He owes somebody $7,000, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's it? Uh, 70. Yeah. Okay. You know? <laughs> I didn't pay for that crown. to take money to make money. <laughs> we'll get into that. We got to do a podcast on finances. Oh, yeah, yes. definitely. Number two you is know, coming. We're coming. If you guys right. like this video and this and this podcast, definitely let me know. The Apple we got plenty million. more. Shut up. Shit. I'm trying to talk. Yeah. Come on. Damn. Two multiple, two multiple things going on. I fucked up. It's all right. I, I fucked it's up. It's on me. It wasn't there. You slapped slap me, bro. <laughs> Hit me. I feel better now. <laughs> I'm vindicated. All right, go back. I feel like I just got slapped. I slapped razor blades. <laughs> <laughs> I would fucking go to sleep. That's now. like eleven thirty. I shaved two hours ago. Listen, biohacking for you know hair having motherfuckers out there. Mm. Don't take some Madonnafil and some Malaxidiv or whatever the Definitely. fuck they take. Definitely. I don't even know. Oh, yeah. I think it's for depression. Yeah, yeah. But some people take some shit for their hair. Yeah. Just cold water exposure will grow your hair and your nails and oh, your yeah. sex drive. I'd have seventeen kids if I was Catholic. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, bro? Shout out to the Catholics out there. I love you guys. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. That's it, baby. Yeah. So talk about, um, but I, I do want to talk about, because the cold water therapy, cold immersion is big right now. Everybody's doing it, right? We've known about this shit for decades. I think when I was in college, uh, no, yeah, ice, ice, ice baths, school, bro. Ice, school, ice, school, yeah. ice baths. Ice you know the science school. behind it. Nah, at this that's point, the thing. At this point, but 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 before I was like, oh, it just hurts and it feel it makes me feel it better. Yeah, but you don't understand why. No, yeah. Exactly. Now I know why. We didn't know why. But, but, all levels, baby. But explain to listeners yeah. what exactly it does. So think about this, right? So you're chilling 98.6 degrees on average. I think the new number is 97 point yeah, some 97. shit. Yeah, 97. But anyway, I've seen that one. you know, whatever the number is, is. I don't give a fuck what it is. <laughs> you get in cold water, a, a ice bath. 30, cold 39. 39 degrees. 39 degrees. Right above freezing. You Fahrenheit. Come, Fahrenheit for you guys. For yeah, I don't even international know. I don't Celsius. understand Celsius. Celsius, Celsius is like six degrees. Germans, man. You can do the calculations. It's like the six rest degrees. Of, you know. Germans, they know shit, man. Yeah. They had a time machine in 1937. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? That's what I heard. Oh, We're gonna do conspiracy. No, cold, cold water, cold water. Yeah, cold water. so we get back to the cold water therapy, and you get up in there, man. Cortisol levels plummet. For those of you who don't know what cortisol is, God bless you. But cortisol is pretty important. It's the stress most. Hormone. It's it's a stress hormone which becomes an inflammatory hormone. Yeah, we talked about that a lot. Cholesterol is an inflammatory response to cortisol. Mm-hmm. So cholesterol actually is produced in your body to stop cortisol. So the more cholesterol you have, guess what? The that more inflammation HDLs and stress LDLs. you have. LDL, oh, okay. the oxidative kind, okay. and then we can get into LDLP and all that shit and another time or today I mean I don't know how many long these motherfuckers will listen yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I got all day shit. Got I ain't got a job you know what I mean I know my wife's such a badass man my kids don't even need me <laughs> but <laughs> she's my man dad when to get some milk right that's it that's it baby but when you get in the cold water cortisol levels go down 
growth hormone goes up, which again, that HGH level, IGF-1, is pretty important to your longevity, physique, mental clarity, capability, all that shit. And your testosterone, your free-flowing testosterone anyway, goes up about 150%. So cold water exposure from three to six minutes a day, whether it's a cold shower, cold plunge, ice bath, cryotherapy, is extremely important to your longevity, mm-hmm. right? And you'll start noticing weird shit initially. Your nails, speaking to Tyler Ray, your nails are gonna grow like a fucking Wolverine. <laughs> if you got any, like, if you're a diabetic, any uh, wounds you have on your extremities, your hands, or your feet, that's just gonna heal up quick. But if you think about what you're doing, you're introducing, like, a near-death experience. <laughs> You get in water, well, your body, your mind doesn't know, your body, your brain doesn't know, oh, he's just getting in this shit to, nope. to brown fat. Your brain's going, if you don't get out of this motherfucker in the next few minutes, you're gonna die, bro. Yep. So what does it do? It recruits every process in your body and every hormone, every chemical to save your life. Yep. When your life doesn't need to be saved, what does that do? It enriches your life. Yep. Biohacking. Mm-hmm. Tricking your body into creating a perfect response mm-hmm. to keep you alive when you're already alive and kicking and chilling. It's kind of like it's a hedge against stress. It's right. kind of like okay. super max training, yeah, like yeah, with bro. lifting weights, like yeah. how you put on twenty percent higher than your one rep max and you stand with it, or do like a half pin press. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah. With, 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 with your, Does anybody hate lifting weights though? I fucking hate lifting weights. Well, like, let me tell you something. I'm we just know, saying. We know why. <laughs> we got to get him back in the goal. In, I got to get in shape. Bro. Better mobility, movement quality. Yeah. But the good thing about when when you have somebody that knows their body f- from the inside out, we've been working now, he can, from a coach's standpoint, he can dictate exactly what's going on, why it's going on, and then I can be that guide to show you, mm-hmm. okay, this is what we need to do in order for it to actually work. Mm-hmm. But... That's why you're such a good coach, though, because, you know, for you coaches out there, you got to be able to relate to the prospect, to the person that you're with, with the, uh, what do you coaches call your clients? What do you call them? Is there a word? Either athletes or clients, yeah. I'm not an athlete, so, like, what's a client? Uh, no, nah, you're more like my boy, but, like. Yeah, yeah. So, like, but to be able to relate to me, coaching is, is not, hey, man, that's wrong. See, a lot of coaches out there, that's fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm again. I'm I'm a owner of a few companies. CEO. I don't like the word owner. CEO of companies. Mm-hmm. Founder. CEO. Founder. Yeah. Whatever the fuck. Supporter. <laughs> investor. Visionary. Visionary. You know. I got that shit. That's biohacking. Two hundred two. One hundred ones. You know. Yeah, that's hacking. Elementary shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, as you as you get into that, you got to be able to optimize that time, that effort. I don't need you to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. Just like an employee, I don't need you to tell me a problem. I need to tell me the problem with the solution. Yeah. And a lot of you coaches out there, man, you got to bring the solutions. You know, the frustration and the whatever that he's not doing that yet. It's your job as a coach to bring it up. That's what you do so well. That's why so many people come to you, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Your relatability, mm-hmm. your your bedside manner, mm-hmm. for lack of a better term, is. I'm focused on you mm-hmm. and that, all these motherfuckers are listening because yeah. they learn when you train me I learn yeah. oh shit he's right mm-hmm. you tell me you tell me with your words hey man open your thoracic fucking biomechanic fucking posterior torque <laughs> and I'm like boom and you're like exactly yeah. right yeah, yeah no, the cues I, I think it's so it's, many it's, syllables it's a key concept with all coaches and teachers in general they gotta be able to relate yeah and understand the person that they're working with yeah and then from there the good thing is like if you have somebody that's willing to invest their time and understand exactly what you tell them to do yeah it's a lot easier because mm. sometimes you tell somebody to do something and you have to break it down so yeah detailed so it's like it's very um monotonous in a lot of ways but you have to have patience as a coach as a teacher as a parent you have to as a leader you have to have patience yeah you know that by owning businesses i know that by owning businesses we know that by you know working with people and leading people so let's take that into account but now what's the next steps let's say for for instance somebody is just feeling like straight shit what are the basic fundamental things that they can do biohacking wise 
to get them to where they need to be, at least just to feel better? Yeah. I mean, number one, listen, metabolic debris is a real thing. Our diets need to be cleaner, mm -hmm. right? Processed food's got to go, you know, a raw diet is mm -hmm. exceptional, even for an athlete. You as know, in raw, something. as in raw, like? Uncooked. Uncooked meat. Uncooked meat, uncooked. Fuck that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you like meat. sushi, though. I do like sushi. Yeah, yes. bro. That's Come true. on. I don't you like sushi. Sushi meat, yeah. You ain't got to think about liver. I was thinking that's the first thing I don't want. Yeah, liver King. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the Liver King, man. Yeah. We'll probably get him on the podcast. Yeah, bro. I ain't trying try to not. eat a rare filet, motherfucker. Got, but we do got... Um, we got yeah, sushi. so those of you out there, Paleo Valley and organic carnivore or whatever yeah, the fuck that is yeah, yeah. yeah you know we got sponsors. i'm sure he's got some i ain't got some sponsors on Roy, on i got no sponsors bro you know what i mean i got apple and some other shit you know but you guys all own that same shit so i ain't even getting a shout out but you know i'm gonna text somebody later <laughs> yeah we're gonna use it at some who makes some. this who makes the styrofoam cup i don't know dixie dixie dixie, dixie, dixie cup. cup dixie cup no nah, they make the solar cup it says dart Dart. So whoever Dart is. Dart, listen, you need to step yeah. your game up. Because listen, we talked earlier. I don't know how to say, but I know an acronym. CFCs yeah. are worse than what's in the cup. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Definitely. Absolutely. So back to. Stay away from that, by the way. Yeah. yeah. This is not biohacking. This is just chilling on a Thursday. Is it Thursday? Thursday, yeah. Thursday. Thursday afternoon. Four o'clock, whatever it is. It's definitely 3.30. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Time we're, travel. We're killing it. Oh, <laughs> the Nazis. Oh, man. We, another, I think you know what I mean? Word too. Is that a wrong word? We're Probably. going back. We're going back. But they were back. they were real, right? Yeah. yeah they were or were they, were, is that a conspiracy, Maybe. too? For the woke culture? Depending on who you ask. Who, who am I asking now? Nick Cannon did. He said it was fake. It was fake? Mm -hmm. So six million people didn't get... Nick Cannon. He doesn't... I don't know. He thinks he knows what he's talking Did about. you guys know... We'll talk to Nick Cannon later. Can, listen. <laughs> listen. I don't know. Finish, finish is, I, no, no, I'm gonna go back to it. This is biohacking. Is is you know, chemotherapy terms now? Is chemotherapy biohacking? Technically, chemotherapy. by definition, yes. By definition, oh, but I don't know yeah. if we would put it in the same category. Though. Where did chemotherapy come from, though? At that point. Well, the medicine kills most cells. Where did it? The where did they cells. learn about it? Do you have an answer? Or are you asking? I don't have the answer. Oh, I, I, no! I'm gonna I'm gonna take a wild guess to the Russians because they, they feel, I feel like they. I feel like I think it word. was. It might have been because they came up. Sadly, they we came can't up even a lot say the word. We can't say the word. We can can we move on? Should we? Go ahead, say it. I mean, you you got say it, got you got problems. white privilege. What should we oh, move man. on? Now we turn <laughs> to a different topic. <laughs> Oh my God! Do this, now? this is the woke episode. <laughs> oh shit! Come on, guys. Listen, uh, uh, I can't stop. I can't stop what you say. No, nah, bro. I don't even. I don't know if anybody should be listening to me. You know what I mean? My kids tell me all the time, "Dad, you dumb as fuck." I'm like, "Yeah." Was done something right? Well, I mean, this all I've done right, I married the right woman. Okay. Respect. All right, that's what I did. You did too. You fuck. It's true. Good job. His wife, by the way, Leo's cool. His wife is cool. And he's all right. I'm all right. You know, <laughs> I just, I just, I, I mean, just every person he's ever worked with, if they were trained by his wife, they would be way better. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right, shout out to Maria. Maria DeRue Maria. is a fucking beast, bro. And not in a bad way. She ain't got big traps. Nah, I'm just saying, like, in life. She, be. she don't even got a biohack to be I, badass. I, well, she'll tell you we compliment each other. Yeah, bro. For real. Really compliment yeah, she's your better half, for, for sure. sure. Absolutely. For me, man, though, like, I have to biohack because I suck not biohacking. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when I do all my shit, my neurofeedback and all the other shit I said, like, 18 minutes ago. Mm hmm I'm a better dude, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a better friend, a better father, a better husband. Mm -hmm. And for those of you listening, um, I'm gonna leave that alone. For the, how about say day? Say day. <laughs> but uh, for those of you listening, you, you know, isn't that what you want? Mm -hmm. Like, as far as I know, you get one life. Yeah. Now I'm not believing. Depends on what you believe. Yeah, I mean, I listen. Believe what you believe. I don't know shit, you know, but I just want to live my best life. And biohacking allows me with cold water therapy, with neurofeedback, with the 35 pills I take based off my genetic predispositions. Yeah. 
blood sugar issues, cholesterol, yeah. inflammatory with the APO4. It allows me to optimize my biology, yeah. right? Yeah. I want to change my destiny. I don't know if you guys believe in predestination, mm -hmm. but for me, I like, I'm kind of a control freak. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If the shirt don't fit right, I want to move that motherfucker around. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Tell me about the Starbucks stores. Starbucks. Oh, man, listen. For those of you who are afraid of rejection, I go around and I just ask motherfuckers for shit that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. I go to Starbucks and I go to the line and say, hey, can I shop here a lot. Can I just get that green tea today for free? And the barista looks at me like, mm, what? I mean, you guys ever do, you do that, Nick? You ever just like, I look for rejection. Cause I'm a, oh, I look for rejection. I'm a rejectable individual. I actually used to play a game called you know what I mean? 10 Rejections. Well, I'm an Arab, kind of yeah. weird looking fucking yeah. dude who wears a hoodie in the summer. But also rocks a, a always a Gucci hat. Or Louis, you know, or LV. LV. Uh, LV. LV. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, one of the rejections is I love Gucci slides, LV hat. Yeah, Gucci come hat. on, man. You got to match. Yeah, uh, bro. Man. Or, or you know, I but, was but talking about Phil. But, but the reason why I, I said that because a lot of people are afraid of rejection. A lot of people are afraid. But why, of though? Ask. Why? Because they don't want, they want what they want. And so they don't want to get the no, right? Their self worth. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. You believe in you. Why are you worried about what someone else believes in you? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in yourself, why would I believe in you? Mm -hmm. Put yourself out there. Well, we even yeah. go put yourself we out there. Go to like the neurochemical aspect. Yeah. Like, like we're yeah. wired to be a, a rejection avoidant because in ancient time, like I use a term called there's no more saber tooth tigers. We still got that same soft That's it, on. maybe. So when we got rejected in ancient time, rejection looked a little different. You went to yeah, a bush. If the bush was shaking, if it's yeah. the There's wind, going on. yeah. If it's the wind, you're okay. Mm -hmm. But if it, if it's a, a saber tooth tiger, you're dead. So that yeah. comes to now, but it's no danger. Kind of recognition, baby. exactly. So let's, we, we let's, think it's bad. Let's talk though. about that for a minute, though. I'm going in full hoodie mode now because yeah, it's time to it's time to fucking get it. Be baby. rabbit at the shelter. <laughs> let's go, baby. <laughs> if I could flow, I would flow right. Oh right man, we're turning. I can't that. flow. Let's not do that. Let's I can't flow. Listen. That's nice. You know, what what you believe about yourself, you tend to, to put out in the world. But your brain is the hardware, your mind is the software. And why I biohack mm -hmm. is, my mind is a conscious choice. Yeah. My brain is subconscious. 90% yeah. of the decisions you guys make, mm -hmm. everybody, not you two, not me, everybody, is subconscious. Yeah. How do you elevate your subconscious? If I told you, hey Nick, in your midline, in your prefrontal cortex, in your amygdala, <laughs> why don't you downregulate your theta and upregulate your alpha waves in your brain? How the fuck would you do that? Well, me personally? So I, it goes back to what we said. I put myself in states where I have to accommodate. I yeah. do risk higher risk, low reward activities because we get into like even the dopaminergic response. I know that I may not get an outcome that I prefer. Dopaminergic. By the way, explain that. the most badass word I've ever heard in my fucking life <laughs> is my, my by my boy Nick. Dopaminergic. Say that again. Dopaminergic. Dopaminergic. Yeah. Say it again. Is no, that I think I'm messing up? No, 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 no. Dopamagenic. 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 Damn, you got to mess it up. Come now. on now. Dopamagenic. Okay. That's so the most badass word. It's I've basically ever dopamine, heard. The, the process of dopamine occurring. That's what it means. Dopamagenic. Okay. Dopamine okay. dopamine Thanks, Bill. Can you make a shirt that says okay. dopamagenic? Absolutely. With hyphens? 100%. If you Nick, do, dope in quote Nick. Quote, Nick quote that, dude. <laughs> no, look at no, the tape no, now. no, 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 bro. I'm saying it wrong. Dope, exactly. mama, I don't so, give a fuck what but, it but is. The word basically just means the occurrence of dopamine to a behavioral Boom. response. Dope and what I was getting, it, baby. But what I was getting at is I put myself things that have higher risk, lower reward. And that sounds stupid, right? Because yeah. as humans, it we're risk stupid, adverse. No, so we bro. were involved because risk got us killed. Yeah. Yeah. Since we don't have that no more, yeah. why don't we do it as a businessman, as a businessman and stream coach, as a businessman and mental coach, we have to do it. We have yeah. to get a new facility. We have to put $100,000 on. You always gotta, you always gotta jump out there. 
But, like, but at the end but, of the day, but, people don't don't do that though. No, but but you. but here's here. I don't want to say but seventeen times. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Okay, all right. No apologies. I'm not, no, I mean I'm, I apologize. I'm that guy. But like, there's a butt again. <laughs> <laughs> Like 15 bucks. No, I don't even know where I'm going with it. Cigarettes. But no, no. <laughs> put the butt out. Seriously, though, man, you can't control your brain, mm -hmm. but you can control your mind. Mm -hmm. See, most of us, we think willpower. Explain explain a little bit. All right. So, that, so yeah. your mind is your conscious thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. You control those. Should I eat that? Should I not? Mm -hmm. Should I... Blank that, should I not? <laughs> you know, what, insert whatever you will there. Your brain is structure. So think about a computer. Let's say you got a 2005 Dell and Spirion fuck face. Damn. Fucking computer. Yeah, I mean, Phil's doing way better than that, yeah, by the way. Uh, Guys, okay? Way the, better. Uh, 2005, like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's crazy. I think the Lakers were still good in 05. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> shit has changed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit has changed. I mean, the Clippers are better at this point. Yeah. 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 We don't even know where we're going from here. Yeah. But, I mean, because everything's up from where the Lakers are right now. <laughs> Let's be real. So, if you got a, if you got bad hardware, your brain, you can put whatever software you want on it. Willpower, biohacking, all that shit on top of it. Mm -hmm. But if the computer can't, if a, not, if a 2005 computer can't run Windows 11, does it mean Windows 11, your software, your decisions, yeah. your lifestyle, your friends, your relationships, does it mean those are bad? Mm -hmm. The hardware's fucked off. Mm -hmm. So neurofeedback, and biohacking is let's change the hardware, our yeah. chemicals. Okay, how do we how do we you know how do we connect our prefrontal coordinate cortex? Mm -hmm. I almost said cornex. That's what makes us human. Yeah, bro. Or what did you say earlier? What was that word he made up? Dopamine. Dopamagenic. Dope 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 dude, that's yeah, the that's, that's the most badass word I've ever heard. I swear to God, I'm gonna rip the fuck out of that shit. Fuck Louie, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking start a brand tomorrow. <laughs> put some vitamins out. Dopamagenetic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm gonna get a tattoo on my fucking palm. Yeah, Dopamagenetic. That's how I do shit. With alchemy. It's not gonna fit. Yeah, bro. How about Phil's tattoos though? Like, I like yours. Give like, a shout out to your tattoo artist real quick. <laughs> My tattoo artist. Yeah, let them know. Y'all, give them shout out to Tony. <laughs> Tony Tats. She got an Instagram no, handle. No, yes, yeah, Tony Tats. Tony Tats. Okay. Two T's two or T's. three T's. It's two T's. Or two, T's. two T's. Tony Tats. Yeah, yeah, Dopaminergic. Yeah. I said. Dopaminergic. Man, that's even more bad. You know what? Dopa that reminds me Minergic. of Deftones. Oh, that's so easy. Yeah. Minergia? Minergia. One of the most badass albums ever. Bro, you. What? Minerva? Nah, bro, you aging yourself. I, mean, I was born in 84, man. I ain't worried about that shit. <laughs> listen, 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 though. Because of all my genetic testing and all my biohacking, I got my. Telomeres measure. Your telomeres are the end of some real important shit in your body. Chromosomes. Chromosomes. Yeah. The longer your telomeres, the longer you live. And by the well, way, I'll accelerate that. By the way, I, I only have that. 23 chromosomes. Some of you might think I have 24, but I only got 23. <laughs> Try something. And for those of you who didn't laugh, you're lame. I got 23 chromosomes. Hence 23 and me. Because yes. you got a 24th chromosome. You ain't special. You're something. But I teach that to my class about the telomeres, yeah. and they get yeah. scared yeah. when I teach. So, it. so listen though, I got my really? telomere. I got my telomere. It's technically is your death date in a sense. It is. But you it, can it's your expiration it. date. Mike right. Tyson apparently has recently said that his expiration date, his telomere length, is really eroded recently. I'm sure. Mike. Man. Well, Mike, Mike, you know, cover the mirrors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm gonna be honest. He did that shit. Like if we if we did uh if we did telomere testing, right? I did it. Did you really? That's what I was talking about. All right, so let me go back to the go mind. Go, 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 go. Non -ramp rampage here. Finish it. Alice Black. Alice Blackburn. This will be it right here. Finish this and, and stamp the approval. Yeah, right stamp it. Alice Blackburn won the 2009 Nobel Peace Prize for her research on telomeres. Okay. And how they are um, correlated. Man, that's a word that. That's you got to get to. That's a good one. <laughs> Correlated to your lifespan, your health span. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
and your telomere length, think about the end of a shoelace. Yep. Your telomeres are the end of that shoelace. And when they get frayed, when them shoes and them J's ain't clean, you got some fucked off telomeres. Man, my telomeres were 11 years younger than my actual age. And my lifestyle sucks. I got four kids. I'm under stress. I eat way too many carbs. I love cheese. <laughs> My boy Vitor Belfort, by the way, Vitor yeah, is the shout man. Out, shout out to Vitor. This motherfucker grilled mozzarella cheese on a grill the other day Damn. on a stick like a fucking popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> bro. It's Brazilian, bro. With some picanha. You Brazilian motherfuckers out there? Jeez, with some picanha. I don't know if I'm, you know, like his, whatever the fucking word he made up earlier. Picanha might be a word I made up. I know how to say it now. Dopaminergic. Yeah. Say it. Dopaminergic. Say it. Dopaminergic. <laughs> You say that, bro. You tell him. Dopaminergic. Yeah, don't look at me. I, listen, let me, let me tell you. I got it first before all y'all. Yeah, I, I said dopaminogenic. Yeah, you was also. You know what I'm saying? It's the next. Listen, I had this the next pandemic. The next pandemic will both be the, because the brain dopaminogenic over here saying it the right yeah, way. Yeah, bro. You know, the whole time was like shit, come bro. On, come on. I train motherfuckers. I'm just, I got I'm it, just, bro. I'm just a meathead. Just but nice. listen, at the at the end of the day, man, this cheese this fucking guy Vitor made me yeah. was legit. Okay. But I do all this negative shit, but biohacking balances me out. My telomeres are long as fuck. I got long telomeres, man. 11 years longer than I should have. Long. <laughs> and, and listen, that don't make sense to me, man. That don't make sense to me because I don't live a life that makes sense for longevity a lot of times. I like to drink. But why do you think that though? Why why, why was it that your telomere length was so long? Because of the because of the, my son's cancer scare put me into biohacking. Perfect. And find your local biohacking community do cryotherapy, do cold plunge, get in a cold shower, 100%. get hot as fuck, yeah. you know, do some hormetic stress with your workouts, but not too much. Yeah. We talked about this today. Mm -hmm. Most people think rest is recovery. Rest is not recovery. Well, well say this again, because they're going to misconstrue that doing nothing is not recovery. Thank you. Because I'm not articulate. Thank you. you got it. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Phil, Doing Phil nothing, the rude, like, man. You don't have to rest anymore? And say his name yeah. right, you motherfuckers. It's up. the rude. <laughs> what did it say? The rude. That's the same out the there. Some people are saying Really? Yeah. Man, get I'm the never out of here. It's the rude. How you follow you and not know how to say your name? Some people yeah. say they rude. Yeah. They're da, wrong. Daru is not bad. That's what the, the guy room. on ESPN always says on da the countdown. And the room. He's on ESPN? Yeah. Motherfucker, I ain't never been on QVC. <laughs> this motherfucker on ESPN, I ain't been on QVC yet. Uh, and I sell shit. Yeah, that's it. That's it. What's the name? Lori Grenier? Thank you. Get your ESPN. Come Let on. me dap somebody at least. Oh, I got you. They're what? Dustin coming in about to fuck up. 100%. Michael Chandler. Countdown is official. Mm -hmm. um, well, it will be. It will. I've heard rumors. It will be. Yeah, it will be. Don't worry. This is a delayed. Yeah, it'll I'll be out next release. week, which will yeah. be released. I'm going back to hoodie Shout mode. Shout out to DP. We're getting back in the camp. Beast too. mode. He's a biohacker. Oh, yeah. yeah. He biohacked that left hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ask Conor McGregor about his biohack left hand. That shit, yeah. It's, 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 it's <laughs> hey, potent. guys. It's potent. Yeah, man. It's potent. You know, I, what, what's the name of his alcohol? Which one? The, the McGregor. whiskey? Oh, no. Yeah. Well, Dustin got a whiskey now, too. Well, I was just asking because Connor must have been on that whiskey because Dustin hit that motherfucker and he looked yeah. drunk as fuck. Well, he was drunk before that. Let's be real, though. <laughs> Let's be real, that. though. Listen, uh, man, we got a cameraman. Shout out. What's the cameraman's name? <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Well, Jared actually busted his ass first. Jared. Time. Yeah, Jared. Listen. Jared busted his ass Phil first. Phil DeRue and Nick are so badass. They got a cameraman. For a fucking podcast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out no, to no, Jared. Jared, what's your Instagram, by the way? Play that. <laughs> see how we can segue in? I see. And you guys know the urban myth of the guy who invented the segue going off a he cliff? Himself, no. That's not true. He's oh. still alive today. He's see, I heard that. See, yeah, everybody heard that shit. Gotta be a billionaire, though. Gotta, gotta be. be. I love segways. Gotta be a billionaire. I like Every the segue into guard this. in the world got one of them sure. things. Red light therapy. You know, your boy, uh, Kevin... <laughs> That Kevin. movie, Paul. Oh, Mom, Mom, <laughs> Mom, He was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. James know. Was Phil, by the way, Phil knows everybody. <laughs> Phil Drew. <laughs> okay, so let's just write that out there. I don't know who the fuck Phil Drew is. <laughs> He's an accountant <laughs> in Seattle. <laughs> Phil Drew is an accountant in Seattle. That motherfucker will save you so much money taxes? on your time. Hey, fuck H&R Block. You got a call like, okay. can you train me? Let me biohack my fucking tax return. All right, hold on. With Phil Drew in motherfucking right, Seattle. Hold on, we got to finish this. 
after we close out. Right. <laughs> Talk about real quick, real quick. Talk about the supplements that you got coming out real quick. I want, yeah, you, I want you to plug it up. So, oh, yeah. so listen, man. Like, I got a little supplement company, Optimize, with yeah. two eyes because I'm optimized. I am, and the rest of it. I like it. It's, it made sense. My brand two new weeks. Team. We got about two, three yeah, weeks. Two, right? three weeks. So we're gonna hit a week of this. Drop. It will be out. Make sure you guys check it out, man. This is called Gray I'm, Matter. I'm definitely utilizing for sure. Yeah. Um, brain health. 100%. You know all that yeah. shit. Yep. And if you are looking for a recovery drink, I definitely have my own supplement out right now. Battle tested. Battle tested, baby. That's what I'm saying. My lame ass takes it. I feel like I can fuck up somebody. Well, that's feel? good. Well, that's the point. <laughs> that's the point. I'm not even a celebrity, but I'm gonna fight somebody. That, well, well, Will anybody you, watch? Celebrity box. <laughs> fuck it. it. Celebrity Jake Paul. kicking. Okay. Oh, I fuck Jake Wrestling? Paul up. Pillow fight champion. Okay. Shit. <laughs> <I see. laughs> we gotta go. See you guys next time. We're gonna do another one. We're gonna do a couple series with my man for five. Definitely. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm leaving. Going. I'm gonna have another <laughs> drink not. after this. I ain't gonna lie. It's Friday. All right. <laughs> On Thursday. What doesn't matter? All right. Gotta go. See you guys next time. Thanks. That's good.